This is CBC Here and Now. I'm at Middle Cove Beach where the Capelin are rolling and what a day for it, kind of. I'll talk about the weather and the Capelin coming up. The ban on single-use plastics won't just impact the environment, but also local businesses. I'll tell you how, coming up. Good evening and welcome to Here and Now. I'm Chrissy Holmes in for Carolyn Stokes. We begin tonight near Bishop's Falls, where a stretch of highway is expected to be closed for several days as crews work to clean up after a devastating collision. Two people were killed last night when a pair of transport trucks collided in a fiery crash on the Trans-Canada Highway. According to police, an explosion followed. Part of the TCH remains closed today as drivers are being diverted through the town of Bishop's Falls. As I said, that diversion between exits 21 and 22 could stay in place for several days. Both trucks were carrying heavy loads when they struck head on shortly before 9 o'clock last night. And as you can see, the contents were scattered right across the roadway. Police are asking any witnesses or anyone with dash cam footage to contact the RCMP in Grand Falls, Windsor. Well, two people are seriously injured this morning after a crash involving a large truck on Peacekeepers Way in Conception Bay South. That crash happened around 6 a.m. between Minerals Road and Manuals Access Road. The Royal Newfoundland Constabulary says the highway will be closed until further notice. And a second man has died while underwater diving at Bell Island. According to the RCMP, a 56-year-old American man died after an accident on Tuesday. The man was a tourist who entered the water at Lance Cove Beach. Police say the diver was under for a short time, then came up showing signs of distress and then went unconscious. He was later pronounced dead at the Health Sciences Centre. You may remember earlier this month, a 60-year-old man from Ontario also died after diving near Bell Island. A 22-year-old man arrested in connection with a weekend shooting in the Ghouls has been released from custody. Thomas Barnes is facing charges of aggravated assault, assault with a weapon, and illegally possessing a firearm. Those charges are in connection to the beating and shooting of a man in his 20s near the side of a highway in the Ghouls on Sunday. Police say that incident is connected to several other recent knife and gun crimes in the metro area. Today, a Crown prosecutor agreed to forego a bail hearing, releasing Barnes on a $500 surety and a promise to appear in court on August 10th. A 21-year-old man has been sentenced to a jail term for just under two years after pleading guilty to impaired driving causing death. William Pico of Marystown was sentenced in, Grand in a Grand Bank court today. Pico was driving a vehicle in Rishoon in July last year when he crashed. His 21-year-old passenger died. Pico was taken to hospital and later charged with impaired driving causing death. The RCMP haven't said what his level of impairment was. Once out of jail, Pico will be on probation for three years and won't be allowed to drive for four years after that. <laughs> Well, Ashley, I, uh, I can't say I'm not a little jealous. You're beachside tonight in Middle <laughs> Cove. Uh, I don't know. And things are rolling along, as I understand. Yeah, they are. I don't think you'd be uh, jealous about a half hour ago when a little shower rolled through and uh, got wet, but the sun's starting to peak out now. It does look like those showers have moved through, but yeah, lots of activity. Take a look behind me. Uh, the Capelin are rolling and that is an exciting time of year for sure. Uh, now that the sun's coming out, it's certainly going to get a lot nicer uh, out here, but let's take a look at what's going on weather-wise across the province. Uh, we do have an area of high pressure sitting just to the south right now and if I zoom in a little bit you can see that shower activity uh, that was rolling through just literally over Middle Cove Beach or at least the northern Avalon uh, today and we do have a, a bit more cloud cover in behind that uh, but take a look at the temperatures very summer like out there even humid uh, most areas in seeing that humidity it felt like 32 at some points this afternoon in St. John's with that sunshine 
sunshine and uh, temperature around 25 degrees. Nice stretch of weather we've been seeing for sure as you head towards central. Those temperatures into the 20s as well and even up across Labrador coastal areas. 25 degrees today in Cartwright. So taking a look at what's going on now. We've lost a few degrees in St. John's. Still feeling like 27 though with those showers and as we head through the next couple of hours still looking at that risk of a few more showers and also those temperatures dropping but still a beautiful evening not dropping too much about 16 degrees overnight tonight i'll have the full forecast details coming up Well, earlier this week, we told you about the upcoming federal ban of six types of single-use plastic. Now that the dates for the ban are out, some local businesses will have to adjust. Others, though, have already made the switch. Here and now's Henrika Wilhelm explains. Plastic cutlery, straws, takeout containers, items many local food places need in their daily operation. We use the 8-ounce uh, uh, daily containers, uh, which can carry hot and cold uh, uh, you know, sauces and curries because we ha it has to be in a sealed container so that which avoids spillers because as we are takeout, we mainly do, uh, you know, customers come, pick up the orders and go. So it has to be in a safe container until they reach their home. Now they will have to look for environmentally friendly alternatives, but there are some challenges. It was very hard at, in the first stage to find a supplier uh, who can supply us the paper bags and then it, it starts slowly uh, coming into the market, but still the price is still the very, very high, five to six times more than the, the plastic bags. I, I know it's going to be the same thing for the, uh, which is going to happen that the containers, you know, once we uh, make a big switch, the demand for the paper bags is going to go up because everybody is going to switch the paper bag, paper containers. Uh, so the price is going to be in, in you know, in, it's going to be very high. I mean, as a, as a small restaurant and a small business, it's going to be very hard for us to increase the price of the food to, to balance it. Also among the banned items, six-pack rings, an adjustment many local breweries have already made. About two years ago, we switched over to using completely cardboard for all of our packaged products. Obviously to reduce our environmental impact as much as possible. We go through millions of cans of beer a year and if every you know, eight or 12 of those has plastic attached to it, that's not good. Uh, so that was a pretty easy decision to make. Even though the switch came with slightly higher costs, it was worthwhile, Fong says. Overall, Fong and Matthew do agree the ban is a welcome move as they both strive to lead environmentally friendly businesses. Henrike Wilhelm, CBC News, St. John's. The RNC is warning of a Bitcoin scam going around Cornerbrook. People are getting calls from someone telling them their bank accounts have been compromised. Then the caller tells the person to withdraw all the money and deposit it into a Bitcoin machine so it won't get stolen. Then, of course, it does get stolen. Police say anyone who gets the call should contact the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre. And if you realize what's happened too late and your money is gone, best call at that point is to the police. Well, now to a follow-up on a story that we brought you last night about a shortage of public health psychologists. A solution could lie with the students who want those vacant positions. But there's a catch. CBC News has learned the residency program for graduates is on hold, all because there aren't enough psychologists to run it. Our Ariana Kellant has this update. The frustrating catch-22. The province needs psychologists, but those psychologists in training may have to leave the province to finish their program. Elizabeth Wallach is one of those students. All of my training and practicums leading up to this point were really tailored to be able to be competitive for matching with Eastern Health. Eastern Health began offering a 12-month pre-doctoral residency in clinical psychology in 2012 and was accredited nationally three years later. Dozens of students have graduated since then. 36% of those students stayed in the province to work. The Canadian Psychology Association renewed Eastern Health's accreditation last year, but these internal documents show students were concerned over high supervisor turnover, and the CPA warned it couldn't last long-term with the number of psychologists they had. 
a problem recognized by the health authority, with an internal document noting there had been six resignations of supervisory staff in the 2020-2021 year and an additional seven resignations in the four years prior to that. The health authority decided to abandon the program for this year. Right now, you know, the study program at Memorial is doing an, uh, an exceptional job of attracting um, students who want to train and remain in the province. Um, and that uh, residency really is that critical intermediary step to allow them to stay here. Wallach is from the province, has a home and a family here. Leaving isn't the best option. Instead, she's looking for a psychologist to take her under their wing. And so the fact that we are not um, provided with kind of more coordinated and concrete processes to be able to cross that finish line here uh, in the province and, and keep these incredible people, it just seems like a, a real missed opportunity. The Honorable the Minister of Health and Community Services. In May, the health minister boasted about the residency program, but didn't mention that it's no longer active. We know that we have a shortage of psychologists here. Recently, an intern program was set up in Eastern Health so that we can convert those people with degrees in psychology into practicing psychologists. That's a first. That happened in the last seven years. Both Eastern Health and the Department of Health say it's doing all it can to recruit new psychologists. And asked about the residency program at a later unrelated news conference, Haggy said he is aware of the program being on hold. Yeah, the issue there is critical mass. We need to have people with enough time and the qualifications to actually mentor and uh, preceptor join that program. So uh, again, it, it's a spool up issue. Uh, we've seen people change their work styles through COVID uh, and psychologists are no different. As for Wallach, she isn't losing hope. She believes the province, health authority and university could come together to match students in advance to those vacant positions. As a Newfoundlander, it makes me kind of uh, sad to see these awesome people kind of slip through our fingers and leave the province again. But Wallach, for one, won't be leaving. Ariana Kelland, CBC News, St. John's. Well, it wasn't your typical last day of school for one small town on the Avalon. For the last three days, Tricon Elementary in Bay de Verde has been closed, all because staff received threatening emails. The RCMP was sent to the school back on Monday and found that a student's email account had been compromised. As a precaution, all student emails were closed and classes suspended. School did reopen briefly today with police on hand for elementary students to go get their diplomas. Parents say they were not allowed to attend. Staying with the end of school, classes ended around lunchtime at St. Andrews and St. John's today. But before those elementary school students could seize their summer vacation, here and now's Garrett Barry put them to the test with one last pop quiz. Take a listen to how it went. I have some questions for you. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Yeah. Do you like going to the beach or going to the pool? The pool. Pool, cause like it's like cold in the beach. 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 Why? Because the beach is much more bigger, and there is also like a tech, technically a pool around the beach. Do you like playing soccer or do you like playing basketball? Basketball. Why do you like basketball? Basketball. I actually used to be in basketball. And like soccer isn't really like my type of like going to play sports, you know? Well, I haven't really played basketball, so I'm gonna go soccer. Basketball. Do you like popsicles or fudge tickles? Popsicles. Why? Which one? Why? Because they're colorful and they taste yummy. Pops. Popsicles. Why? It's more refreshing. Fudge tickles. Why? Um, I just I just like that it's easy to bite into them because with popsicles it like it's like hard and crunchy and I don't really like that. I like the smooth of popsicles. Do you like hot dogs or hamburgers? I say hamburgers. 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 Hot dogs. Because I'm not really a, a big fan of the meat that hamburger patties are made out of. Do you like playing on a bike or playing on a scooter? Bike. Why? because then you don't fall down as much. A bike. Playing on a bike. Why? Because bikes go faster. Scooter. Why? 
Because I know how to do a lot of tricks on scooters. Like what? Uh, um, I can do a 180. Do you like ladybugs or butterflies? Butterflies. Why? They're more colorful. Ladybugs. Why? Because I like knowing how many years old they are. How do you tell how old a ladybug is? Uh, by the spots on the back. I don't know. Which one? Because the super duper duper colorful. That's it. That's all the questions I have for you. Okay. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you very much. Oh, we'll head outside of you. And The Cape Flynn are rolling at Middle Cove Beach. We're going to meet some of the folks who went in for a feed. That's coming up just after Ashley's weather. and have seven days to remove their gear. 30 years ago. The lowest level of cod stocks ever recorded. The cod moratorium. Everything changed. There's nothing left here anymore. Generations later, life is still changing for people, communities, and the ocean. The moratorium, July on CBC, Newfoundland, and Labrador.
Time now to check back in with Ashley, who has scored the top summer assignment today down where all the action <laughs> is at Middle Cove Beach. Ashley, uh, looks like there's still a few people there. Yeah, actually, in just in the last 15 minutes, we've seen lots more people come out, I guess, now that the rain has cleared. It's a classic. If you don't like the weather in Newfoundland, wait five minutes because now it's uh, beautiful. I got to take the sweater off as well. Uh, but yeah, temperatures today across the island were absolutely beautiful. Second full day of summer and uh, we're definitely feeling it out there. Let's take a look at those temperatures across the board. 25 degrees in St. John's today and those temperatures across the island were warm at 25 also in in uh, Twilling Gate, 20 in St. Anthony. And then we do have those warm temperatures up across Labrador as well. After a cool couple of days, Happy Valley Goose Bay currently uh, did sit at 23 degrees and that's exactly where you're sitting now. So there is a bit of humidity up across the big land, feeling more like 26, but the majority of the humidex uh, or the humidity is across the island. Badger feeling more like 29, Gander feeling more like 30. And then in St. John's, we've lost a couple of degrees, hovering around 20 degrees right now, but that humidex still feeling like 27. So if you like that heat, you certainly like the forecast over the next couple of days. Uh, as we head into Friday, we're going to hang on to this humidity for a good chunk of the island as well as southeastern portions of Labrador. And even into Saturday, uh, we're going to see that as well. So certainly lots of uh, lots of humidity. And if we take a look at the satellite and radar, you can see where that's coming from. So definitely southerly flow areas along the south coast a little bit cooler today. And if I zoom in a little bit, uh, you can see that shower that moved through uh, earlier this afternoon. And the good news is, is that it's gone. Looks like there's a bit more shower activity just to the south there, but uh, we're going to see that risk for the next couple of hours, I'd say, as far as showers go, as far as the future tracker shows anyway, and then areas of fog along the south coast as we head through the night tonight, and uh, maybe even a few showers in the mix as well. Labrador generally looking uh, fairly quiet through the overnight, but as we get into the early morning hours, we're looking at that chance of showers again for uh, Lab West. Temperature tonight not really moving too much, going down to about 12 degrees in Lab City as the overnight low tonight. And uh, as far as the island goes, temperatures really not moving too much uh, for you as well. Look at that 12 to 18 degrees warmest temperatures through central and the west coast but the winds are going to stay a bit brisk out of the southwest around 20 to 40 kilometers per hour. And then if we take a look at the future tracker for tomorrow, a generally unsettled day. The chance of showers will stick around for most areas, particularly in the morning. And then as the afternoon rolls through, we're going to see uh, some peaks of sun in the mix for sure. And then showers will move in for Labrador as well through the day, uh, particularly central and the southeastern portions of the island as well. Now taking a look at uh, the into the overnight and into the early morning hours still uh, likely going to see some of that shower activity head towards the northern peninsula. Same thing with the west coast where you'll see that chance of rain through the night. Temperatures tomorrow another beautiful day. Humidex value is expected to feel uh, pretty close to what we're seeing today. Maybe a little bit less but those winds still out of the southwest between 20 to 40 kilometers per hour. And then even through central, uh, you're looking at your temperatures fairly warm. Uh, along the south coast, those temperatures obviously, uh, again, you're in that onshore flow, unfortunately gonna stay a bit cooler and the chance of drizzle uh, for the most part. Uh, and then temperatures between 25 and 26 degrees through central. And as we head towards the west coast, temperatures will be into the 20s as well. A bit more unsettled for you. Still likely going to see the sun. Very brief uh, if it does come out. And those winds will be out of the southwest between 30 and 50 kilometers per hour and then up across the northern peninsula. In onshore flow, particularly along the strait, those temperatures will be a bit cooler around uh, 16 degrees along the strait there. Uh, but the rest of southeastern Labrador looking at a pretty nice day. 23 degrees with those temperatures into the 20s as well across the rest of the big land. So definitely uh, seeing lots of nice weather out there today. And the reason why we're here is because the Capelin are rolling and we talked to a lot of people earlier today. Very excited for this. Let's take a look. morning that they were rolling here and we came down and the timing was just perfect and this gentleman down here snagged all these capelin for us and now I'm going to spend the rest of the day cleaning 
and happy for supper. This is uh, Pearl, this one is Lucky, and uh, they're nine weeks old. Well, wherever the cable to, that's where we go, I guess. So this is the first we hear of them. <laughs> we just kind of came down to look at them. We weren't going to catch any. Um, we just kind of wanted to see what the excitement was about. And the kids are enjoying it, so. I walked up to a gentleman and I said, what's going on? He goes, you can't be from here, he said, because nobody asked, would ask that question. And now he's over there. And I took a picture of him, too, because I, I got to show the boys back at home. So he was pretty happy with that. And then he said, I'm going down to Quitty Vitty Brewery. And I said, then I'll buy you a beer. <laughs> I haven't eaten a capelin before. Maybe somebody needs to let me know what the, what the taste is like. But uh, I'm sure it's pretty yummy. It looks like people are coming back with a few buckets worth. How many capelin have you caught? A lot. A lot. We're just putting out our nets and trying to hope for the best. Perfect. Yeah. I'm just watching this gentleman over here catching them and uh, yeah, I think I'll just be content doing that, right? I'm a land lover, so I'll let somebody else catch the fish. I got nothing bad to say. Ashley, I suppose he doesn't have anything bad to say. I don't think I've ever seen Middle Cove Beach so flat, calm. It is. I, I must agree with you uh, for sure. There, there's lots of people uh, still out here enjoying the weather and obviously the Cape Lynn, So I'm sure lots of people are going to have a nice feed tonight. All right. We'll stay tight. We'll check back in in just a little bit. Thanks so much, Ashley. Ashley. Of course. Did you know that this is the National Year of the Garden? So in honor of that, and because so many of us just love gardening, over the next few weeks we're going to be exploring some gardening topics. Just looking at the basics, speaking with some experts, and getting our hands dirty. Well, today we're going to learn to make one of these your own hanging flower basket. Joining me now is Tim Walsh at the Botanical Gardens. So, Tim, what are the basics here? What are the basic ingredients? Where do you start if you want to make one of these? We've had these baskets at the Botanical Garden for more than 20 years now. Really? And we just reuse them over and over again. What we've been doing the last few years, however, using local moss, sphagnum moss that's just collected in the wild. So I'm literally just going to line the bottom of that with that sphagnum and I'm going to just take pieces of it. You can see I'm just pressing it up against the side and I think that's pretty much it. So this is what it looks like on the inside, but look at the outside. I hadn't even thought about going that, to the, into the woods to grab some yeah. of that. We could fill this up right now and that would be perfect, but I also like to put one other thing in here to make sure that the, uh, the moisture is held on for a little bit of time. So if you think about when we water our house plants, often house plants have a little saucer that sits underneath so that the water doesn't spill out onto the coffee table. Mm -hmm. And then that water sits there and gets absorbed back up into the plant as it needs it. We're going to kind of create that same sort of thing at the bottom of this pot. And all I've got is a little piece of garbage bag that I sliced into a square. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to push that in the middle. I'm not lining the whole container. I'm basically just creating at the bottom a little saucer. And what will happen is when we water that plant, on, especially on really dry days, the water, of course, is going to make its way down through the soil, and some of it will hold up on that piece of plastic and kind of act as that saucer. And now, I'm going to take that soil and I'm going to bury that, that plastic. Continue to fill that up, so I'm going to get our soil in here and just throw in a few pots of soil, knowing that we're going to be displacing some. The other thing we're going to do now with our open fingers is just to Press it. Why don't you do a little yeah, bit? Yeah. Of, yeah, just press that in there. And what we're we're not packing it down really tight. We're just pressing it in nice and gently. We're moving the air spaces. Okay. Because what happens if you don't do that? When you water, it just the soil just slumps, okay. and you're left with not enough soil in there. It feels good, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now comes the fun time. It's yes. planting time. There's a concept in containers called thrillers, fillers, and spillers. Oh. And if you think about that, the thriller is that big plant in the middle or at the back, depending on your orientation. And that's going, to do, that's going to be the big showpiece. And then the spillers are, by their very nature, those plants that kind of spill down over the side. So that's like the petunia that we have here. It's going to spill down over the side and create that drama. And then between those are the fillers. And those are important plants too, but they don't have that big showy top or that big spill, but they fill in those spaces in between. So those geraniums, 
either of those geraniums, whichever one that jumps out at you. Oh, well, I love this. That's a nice this one. It's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful, deep pink color. Yep. And so, yeah, geraniums are great because they do have a, an upright branching uh, habit and lots of beautiful blooms. And so we're just going to take that out with our hand, open up a little cavity, and literally just push that in there. So this, this one will go in the middle. That's in the middle. There's our thriller. Oh, that's beautiful. That's, What's this? That's a verbena. And mm -hmm. look at the combination. Look at how, how those uh, accent each other. Yeah, yeah. they complement each other. And so we're going to take that out. That one's got a little bit more root. See that? So we are going to loosen. You can even see where the roots are starting to curl a little bit here. So we'll just root, loosen those up just a tiny bit. Just something like that. And we're going to just open up a cavity in the side here and just push that in there. One of the more common and more widely used and probably been used forever in hanging baskets is lobelia, flowering yeah. lobelia. And this is a beauty. This one is this beautiful blue flowers. Gorgeous. Incredible. It also comes in white, it comes in pink, so you can really complement your container by uh, deciding which plants that work best for you. And it really it's all, pops next to the pink too. It does, too. yeah. And we're just gonna push that in there near the edge. I'm even tilting it a little bit toward the side so that uh, so that I'm gonna encourage that plant to grow down. Get, so this is the spiller. That's the spiller, that's one of them anyways. We're not gonna be limited to just one because <laughs> why when you don't have to? <laughs> Sometimes you buy the, the, the plants from your nursery and they're in containers like this. So this is actually a peat tray and there's six plants in here and so we'll just use a basic kitchen knife and I'm going to literally just cut those out like it was a like I'm cutting out a brownie from the kitchen <laughs> and there's my little little plant look at that and so I'm opening up a little cavity and I'm gonna push that in there and you can see this container already filling up mm. so th this would be one of the fillers that's right exactly yeah, yeah. You're getting us. I'm getting there. Yeah. <laughs> this, of course, is going to be a showstopper, and petunias generally are. And there's quite a wide variety of color in petunias. Uh, this is this beautiful two-tone yellow, very deep yellow center, and a little more paler uh, yellow around the edge. So there's that petunia. So we're going to actually push that in there. And sometimes you can just push it in there if the soil is nice and loose. Beautiful. I'm going to put a white in there, because I always like white. This is actually Gypsophila. And Gypsophila is the same genus of the plant baby's breath. Can I stick it in there? Oh my goodness, great idea. Yeah. Where do you think it should go? Um, it's a spiller. It's a spiller. Yeah. So this is a spiller. Yeah. Would you put two spillers next to each you other? Could. Or I, would you? I, I like that. Yeah. There, there, there you go. Spread Just, it out. There you go. Yeah. Just Spread the love. In. You got it. Well, Tim, this is just gorgeous. Thank you so much for showing us how to put it together. It was my pleasure. I just love these hanging baskets. I think everybody should have one. I agree for sure. And if you folks at home have any questions or you'd like us to explore any particular gardening topics, you can always send us your questions. Just email us at hereandnow.nl at cbc.ca. We'd love to hear from you. Going to Scene, that's a bit of a head scratcher because Scene actually has 10 million members, but very few actually use points. Going for groceries and looking for deals. Why one food professor says Sobeys had to ditch air miles. That conversation is coming up.
About 19,000 fishermen and fish plant workers are out of work. The entire area is off limits to cod fishing. To ensure that the northern cod survives as a species. The proposed compensation is hardly more than welfare. After the cod moratorium, there was a heaviness around the community and a lot of people left. Bonavista is one of those rural anomalies. There's a big resurgence of people coming back. You have this bucolic surrounding, and then you have somebody who has a whole other concept about color, shape, and form. People think it's one of probably the premier festivals in the country now. There's a lot of uh, standing up for, for our own rights as First Nations. I happened to see the John Cabot statue, and I immediately was drawn to wanting to do some sort of intervention with it. Some were not overly comfortable with the idea of covering the statue. I profoundly believe that the contemporary art can contribute to finding pathways forward. Well, change seems to be the name of the game in the grocery store business these days. Recently, Sobeys announced that it is ditching air miles and hitching up with Scene Plus Rewards program instead. That means as of August 11th, air miles will no longer be available at Sobeys, Foodland, Needs and Lawton's. So for more on this, we've got Sylvain Charlebois. He is the senior director of the Agri-Foods Analytics Lab and professor in food distribution and policy at Dalhousie University. Good afternoon, professor. Good afternoon. So why is Sobeys ditching air miles? Um, honestly, I think it had to really to remain competitive. Uh, you see uh, right now, of course, with inflation, the market is changing. More and more people are looking for deals. There's not a whole lot of coupons going on right now. There's not a whole lot of rebates in stores, regardless where you are in the country because since COVID. And so the way you can save money is by using loyalty points, loyalty programs. And uh, air miles weren't necessarily doing it for Sobeys uh, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, air miles were getting complicated. There were all sorts of miles and uh, they, there's been some changes in the program that Sobeys couldn't control. And the other thing, when, uh, when consumers are looking for deals, you want to promote your private labeled products as much as possible. So in Sobeys case, it would be products like compliments, for example. And, and, and there was no coordination between the program and Sobeys itself. So it had to really come up with a strategy uh, which will allow them to promote private label, tri private label products as much as possible as Loblaws is doing right now with, with the PC Optimum program. When it, when it comes to saving money, when it comes to savings in general, uh, PC Optimum is way ahead of everyone else. But when we talk about familiarity, for example, air miles, I mean, people know what that is. Scene Plus, mm. Mm, I don't know, a lot of question marks. I mean, wh when, I mean what, what exactly is Sobeys up against here in making this transition? Is this a risk or are they in for more rewards? That's a good question. Uh, I mean, ditching uh, air miles uh, is, is not a surprise. I, for many people, uh, it wasn't a surprise because air miles is, is really not going anywhere, really. And, and Air Miles also supports Metro, which is one of Sobe's competitors, which made things a little bit awkward. So to, to see that divorce made sense. Going to Scene, that's a bit of a head scratcher because Scene actually has 10 million members, but very few actually use points they collect uh, with scene. So scene has a lot of work to do. Uh, so that's why I'm not surprised if people in Newfoundland or elsewhere aren't necessarily convinced it was the best move for Sobeys. But my guess is that they'll actually make some changes in order to make that move uh, a logical one for uh, for the brand. Well, let's map this out. So Scene is now co-owned now by, by Sobeys, uh, Cineplex, yep. and Scotiabank. So they're, they're all That's in right. on this. So, I mean, what, what can a consumer get with Scene Plus points besides movie tickets? Well, there's a few op options with uh, movie tickets. It's all about entertainment, but not many deals in retail. And frankly, right now, over the last 12 months 24 months a lot of people will be looking for deals retail and i think sobeys 
we'll have that in mind. Now, of course, with the Bank of Nova Scotia, as you know, both companies are based out of Nova Scotia, so that 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 partnership really wasn't much of a surprise. But my guess is that over the next little while, they'll be working on how to make sure that consumers see value in the program as grocery shoppers, not just as movie watchers. So how might that value, those value opportunities show up on the consumer end? I, I think it's, it boils down to saving money. Uh, it boils down to reducing the cost of food. That is going to be the number one uh, issue for, uh, for uh, grocery shoppers. And so if, if they, want, they want this program to be successful, they have to really allow people to see how much they're saving through the program because that's the, basically what PC Optimum is doing. And you can actually track points. You know exactly how much you can save. You feel special when you use the PC Optimum, point, point, uh, PC Optimum program. So so ways to, to, to be successful will have to make people feel special as well. There's not a whole lot of details in regards to the new program. Uh, I, I would say this, though, if, if they stick with the current program as it is, it's not going to work. They need to make some changes. Sylvain, thanks so much for this. My pleasure. I mean, I couldn't believe it. It was the biggest billboard I'd ever seen in Times Square. I literally fell over into the middle of the street when I saw it. Stephen Dunn is still tripping out about rebooting Queer as Folk. The St. John's director tells us why hosting the Canadian premiere here is his real dream come true. That's next.
Welcome back. Well, imagine living in L.A., working as a director with names like Juliette Lewis and Kim Cattrall, and calling the shots on an iconic show that you grew up loving. Well, that is Stephen Dunn's life right now. The St. John's born filmmaker not only directed the reboot of Queer as Folk, he created it. Now, the series was actually shot in New Orleans, but Dunn says the origin story is deeply rooted in St. John's, which is why he wanted the Canadian premiere to happen here tonight. I met with Stephen Dunn this afternoon to find out why he says this part of the story is the real dream come true. Honey, what are you doing here? I lost my keys. Wow, you love a dramatic entrance. Dad is home! <laughs> Hi, girl. How are you feeling? I'm kind of nervous. I've never performed on like a real stage before. I really want this. I'm not good at it. Steven, did you ever imagine that you'd be flying in from LA, coming here to St. John's to launch the reboot of Queer as Folk? I mean, I almost didn't make it because of the air uh, travel this past <laughs> week, but um, in all honesty, this is a, it's a totally surreal. I used to watch Queer as Folk in my basement with the volume on mute, like terrified someone would find out I was watching it. Um, and now um, here we are in St. John's about to uh, uh, premiere the show in Canada. Um, I, no, I, I never thought when I was a kid, if you had have told me when I was a kid that this would be uh, what I'd be doing 20 years later, I would have never believed you. A lot of people probably don't realize this whole thing happened because of you. Um, tell us how, how this all came together. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I went to, um, I mean, I've, I've always really wanted to tell queer stories. And so I started developing a concept to reimagine the show um, for a modern audience. And so I, I um, found out the rights had reverted to Russell T. Davies, the original creator of the show, who um, lives in Manchester. And I was in the UK at the time, so I just got on a train. And um, he luckily took a meeting with me where I pitched him um, a story about a community rebuilding and um, he loved this idea and saw this as a way to expand on the legacy of the show and so then I, I, I took um, the rights, took my pitch and brought it down to LA and started pitching and there was like a bidding war between all the major networks and um, think, you know, thankfully we uh, ended up at a wonderful home and um, you know, a few years later started to shoot it in New Orleans. Um, it's a, really, honestly, this is like a dream come true moment for me. I'm like, I need to pinch myself every morning. <laughs> I can't imagine what that call would have been like for you as a creator, getting the call, getting the green light. Can you like take us inside of there, inside that moment? Because I understand it happened here, right? It did. It happened. Um, I was with my mom. Uh, we were locked down uh, in COVID and we were watching the finale of WandaVision and we had just taken um, an edible. <laughs> and, uh, and then I got this call from all of my reps um, and they, they had skipped the part of the phone call where they were telling me that the show got greenlit and just immediately launched into like how I have to like reschedule my year and push around my projects. And I was like, what are you talking about? I had no idea. And then it turned out they were, I was, I, I, they just kept talking and I was like, you know what? The edible just kicked in. <laughs> I gotta go and I hung up on them and then I, I was like please call me the next day and then they explained to me over text no the show has been greenlit like your dreams just came true and I was like <gasps> I couldn't believe it it was I was just so grateful to be there with my mom you know who like is such a I have a mom who like is filled with so much unconditional love and you know got me through a lot of hard times in my life and I was really grateful to share that moment with her. This is such a full circle moment from starting here with this dream to bringing it back here for mm -hmm. the premiere. It's yeah. all about creating space. It and is. even even the premiere is connected with creating more space for LGBTQ here. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, so we're sh uh, we're actually the entire premiere that's uh, tonight uh, at the Avalon Mall is a fundraiser for Quadrangle, which is an organization in St. John's that is aspiring to build the first queer community center in the city, which it can be a resource for uh, queer people, for allies, for parents who are uh, who need help um, integrating in a, into a queer community. Um, and um, so we're throwing a fundraiser for them uh, to get this off the ground. And this is a really queer space that's like 
you know, that is the most important thing um, for our community is safe spaces. And that's really what the show Queer as Folk is about. Um, and so my hope is that by having this premiere here, it's going to bring more attention to Quadrangle um, and raise more funds for them so that we can have the resources that are available in, you know, really every, any other province. We are one of the few that doesn't really have this. So it's, it is a very urgent um, a cause that I think um, uh, I'm really proud that we're able to bring some attention to. For any kid out there that might be contemplating watching this in the basement, <laughs> what is your message to them as somebody who has landed here today? I mean, if there's, I, for any queer kid out there, like you are not alone. There are so many, I think, the, the, the scariest thing when I was young is that I felt like I didn't, at that time, St. John's was very different and I didn't know any other queer people and I had to really look to find them. But now things have changed so much, but you know, there are people all over the island um, who are queer and might need, need a sense of community. And I, I just really want to implore people to, to keep, keep looking, keep finding your community because um, they're out there. There's so many people out there like you and um, yeah, we're just waiting. <laughs> we're waiting to hang out, you know. <laughs> Stephen, thanks so much for telling us about this and congratulations, this is amazing. Thank you so much, pleasure talking with you.
Well, it's time to uh, check back in with Ashley, who of course is live from Middle Cove Beach tonight. Ashley, like the sun is back out again. Or it looks like the best day ever down there. The Cape Linn are in, the people are there. Yeah, it is uh, absolutely beautiful. In fact, uh, whoop, they're all falling out of the bag, but I did just get uh, a bag of Cape Linn, which is nice. Someone just got a bunch for me. There's lots out here, which is kind of nice. Oh, that's pretty nice. People going out collecting the Cape Linn for you. I guess you're busy. You got your hands <laughs> full. You know, you're wired electrically. That was nice. I do. Yeah, yeah. And they're all now at my feet because they're hopping out of the bag. But uh, yeah, it is an absolutely beautiful <laughs> night uh, out there. There you go. He's going down to it. Uh, an absolutely beautiful night out here. And we do have lots of nice weather on the way as well. Let's take a look at the forecast as we head through the weekend. A beautiful weekend as far as temperatures go. Anyway, uh, we do have those temperatures sitting into the 20s, about 23 degrees for St. John's for your Saturday. And then those temperatures across the island are going to be into the 20s. It is looking a bit unsettled, though, with the chance of some shower rolling through and then especially up across Labrador as well, uh, between 13 to 18 degrees through the day. Now, as we head through Saturday evening, it does look like things are going to get a little bit wet uh, for a good chunk of the island and continue uh, for the morning, at least for the eastern half of the island on Sunday. Eventually those showers should clear and we should actually see a good chunk of the island seeing some pretty nice uh, day as far as uh, sunshine goes and then take a look at the temperatures. Now the humidity is going to stick around in some areas as well. So 25, 26 degrees, but the humid X is going to feel a lot warmer than that. So uh, definitely some nice summer like temperatures as far as Labrador goes. We're looking at some sunshine as well. A little shower activity expected for the northern portions of the uh, big land as well. About 15 degrees will be the overnight or daytime high rather. Taking a look at the long range forecast looks pretty nice. Temperatures into the 20s right across the board. Showers through Monday potentially at least in the morning. And then eventually uh, we should see some sunshine about 22 degrees through the day. And then as far as Tuesday goes, we may see a few showers Tuesday evening with those temperatures around 23 degrees through the day. And uh, the overnight low is still pretty nice between 14 and 17 degrees uh, through next week. Now, as far as uh, central Newfoundland goes, lots of sunshine to start next week. Maybe a few cloudy periods in the mix, but look at the temperatures, 26, 28 degrees uh, with that uh, overnight lows again between 15 and 17 degrees through the evening hours. And then for western Newfoundland, you're looking at uh, again 26, cooling a little bit on uh, Tuesday, about 24 degrees through the day. And then as far as Labrador goes, uh, beautiful, warming nicely Sunday and Monday. Monday. Look at that, 29 degrees for Eastern Labrador by the time we get into Monday. Unfortunately, uh, Tuesday is looking a bit unsettled with some showers and about 21 degrees. And then for Western Labrador, we have uh, some rainy conditions moving in, especially as we start next week. But temperatures will be between 18 and 19 degrees through the day. Now, take a look at this weather shot. Someday out there on Gander Lake, George O'Brien shared this great shot with us, a couple of kayakers out there. And if you would like to share any weather photos with us, send them to Facebook, my Twitter, or email them to nlphotos at cbc.ca. Ashley Brawweiler, I can't believe you got through that whole weather forecast with those capelins squidging on your toes. <laughs> they were on my toes. Yes, they were, Chrissy. I felt them, but I kept going. It's all good. All right, time to cook them, <laughs> Ashley. Listen, thanks so much. And thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow night.